Hi everyone, welcome to Fanatic here. I'm Dr. Stephanie Grace and I'll be your skipper, cruise director, dance instructor, and nail artist for the next five exciting days and ten romantic nights. Today we're going to be talking about the Jungle Cruise and the Jungle Cruise movie while I do Jungle Cruise map nail art. Just a warning, this is the first time I've recorded myself doing a manicure and I'm still getting used to my programming. So sorry if the visuals and the audio for that matter aren't always great. Anyway, let's get started. The Jungle Cruise was the first movie I saw in theaters since before March 2020, so it was a very special experience in itself for that reason. And as soon as I finished watching the movie, I had an idea for this manicure, so I rushed home to get it done, and there the footage stayed in my memory card until I finally felt ready-ish to talk about it. As you probably know from the title of this video, I used to work at the Jungle Cruise. I worked there for a little over eight years in total, and I really loved it. I grew up going to Disneyland, and the Jungle Cruise was always my favorite ride, but I thought I could never be funny enough to actually be a skipper. But little did I know, all I really needed was a pulse, so I hired in and there I stayed. It was some of the best years of my life, and even back in 2006 when I hired in, we already knew the Jungle Cruise movie was coming. I actually worked the premiere for Pirates of the Caribbean 2, Dead Man's Chest, and while I was standing out front greeting guests, a man came up to me and said, you know, I'm making a movie about this place. And I kind of absentmindedly said, just be sure you get it right, to which the man got extremely flustered and blurted out, well, right is in the eye of the beholder, to which I was like, okay. <laughs> I was 19 years old and an entry-level employee at the time, but clearly this got to him. So this begs the question, did they get it right? Well, no, to be honest, not really in my opinion. I mean, for one, it's set about 20 years before the ride, the Jungle Navigation Company is nowhere to be seen, and the boat in the movie really only bears a passing resemblance to the ones in the parks. But was it a complete trash fire? Also no. There were a lot of great parts, a lot of funny moments, and some excellent choices in casting and design. So let's dive in. Let's talk about the movie, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and how it feels to have something that was such an important part of my life turned into a summer blockbuster trying to appeal to the masses. I will stop here to say, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this movie and want to, press pause right now and go to Disney Plus and watch it. Also, everything in this video is my opinion, and it has been several years since I worked on the ride, so take all this with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, I think movies are good, and having fun is better, so if you have a different opinion, Opinion, I respect that. In fact, I'd like to hear it down in the comments. I'm going to talk about the casting first. When I heard that the leads in the movie were going to be The Rock and Emily Blunt, I was hopeful, but also kind of meh. The Rock, of course, was a solid choice from the corporate side. There are few actors out there as universally well-loved as The Rock, especially in Disney circles. Playing Maui and Moana made him a Disney darling, and I do think it was a good choice to make him our main skipper and builder of this colonial outpost, and not a white person, although his character is revealed to be distinctly of European origins. My first thought about The Rock in his opening scene was, he was kind of shitty, right? Like, he doesn't tell his jokes particularly well, his performance didn't really feel ingrained to me. He didn't sound like someone who had done the same tour time after time after time, and believe me, I know exactly what that sounds like. He sounded like someone who just learned his spiel and was trying to sound bored, which is honestly one of my least favorite kinds of Skipper performances. But I will say here, as lackluster as his performance was, there really is nothing more authentic to the Jungle Cruise than a Skipper who's just a little shitty, you know? I mean, if I had my way, the main character in this movie, if any, would have been Will Ferrell, and that's just because I feel like his particular brand of douchebaggery would have been, like, exactly the perfect fit for the Jungle Cruise. But for what it's worth, The Rock was charming and large, and I don't think he brought the movie down. I enjoyed him in the more emotional parts, and there's worse things to do than watch Dwayne Johnson for a few hours. Emily Blunt was also a person in the cast, and you know what? I liked her. She was okay. I did like her character, although I do think her character made some bad decisions and was a bit impetuous. It was kind of annoying to see her insist on doing dangerous things like navigating the boat through rapids, but also I think her flaws made her a more interesting character. I found myself enjoying this high dexterity, high intelligence, low wisdom character they rolled up for Emily Blunt. I liked that they gave her specific talents that she could perform, like picking locks and throwing a punch. I also enjoyed some of the Easter eggs they wrote into her character. Honestly, they might not have even been Easter eggs, but it made me laugh that she always said, oh my gosh, because to me, that's such a Jungle Cruise thing. See, here in California, we say, oh my god, all the time, and generally nobody notices or calls anyone out on it. 
But I learned the hard way when I moved to Arizona for a year that some places outside of California, this was not considered okay. I actually got in trouble for it at school, but no one would actually tell me what I did wrong, so... That was a fun way to learn. Anyway, when I started the Jungle Cruise, I was a diehard oh my godder, and that had to be removed from my vocabulary. When a skipper starts, they must be cleansed of their ungodly habits, and therefore, oh my god becomes oh my gosh. And let me tell you, that is a thing I said a lot until I finally got my groove. Also, I found the whole thing about her not being allowed in the boys club and wearing pants to be very appropriate, since the history of the Jungle Cruise is pretty fraught with sexism. For the majority of the Jungle Cruise's life so far, only men were allowed to be skippers. And up until a few months after I started, women had to wear a different costume from the men, which had culottes instead of pants. Now, regardless how I personally feel about the costume changes, this is a notable change, and it was something I thought was cute to comment on in the film. I guess I've been talking more about Emily Blunt's character than the actual performance of Emily Blunt, but, well... I thought she was good. Hooray! I thought McGregor, despite inexplicably having a last name for a first name, was fantastic. Yes, I know I'm using the character's name this time and not the actor's name, but I don't know this actor as well as the lead, so here we are. Anyway, I thought he was great. His character was funny. He had some of the best lines in the movie. And I thought his scene with The Rock where he comes out as gay was super sweet. And I know that this is yet another one of those Disney introduces their first gay character situations where Disney promises to be more explicit, but they still kind of water down the gayness or make it up to interpretation. But I really don't think this scene could have been interpreted any other way unless you're really trying to misinterpret it. I thought it was a nice moment and it fleshed out his character and motives. And it was nice that The Rock was totally cool with it. I do think that Disney could do more to feature gay characters, but I did like what they did with this one. Anyway, on to my favorite part of the movie, the villains. I love the villains. First off, I love the German prince. He was hilarious, and I think he was the best cast and the best acted character in the movie. He was really understated, but that made his sort of quiet intensity even more entertaining. I love the details they gave him, like the fancy interior of his submarine, or him lining up peas on his fork after picking the fish on his plate completely clean. He was charming, but scary, and his bit with McGregor about the bees, I haven't laughed that hard in a theater in a long time, which... I guess isn't really saying much. I don't get out much. The Conquistadors were also incredible in my opinion. The acting was okay, but what I was really into was the story and the design. Growing up in California in the 90s, Conquistadors were really presented to me as heroes that came and nobly built missions and taught natives how to be more like them, because that was good, right? Turns out it was not that good. Conquistadors were kind of monsters, and although the main conquistador had a tragic backstory, the movie didn't use it to excuse his actions, and I like that in a movie. There's a difference between sympathizing with a villain and condoning their actions, and I feel like this movie walked that line extremely well. Also, the designs of the Conquistadors were amazing, especially the Bee-Man. I love the Bee-Man, I don't know why. I couldn't help but notice, though, that these characters were very similar in feel to various pirates in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, which some people might find pretty lazy, but honestly, I think that's a great choice. Pirates was a huge commercial success, the only major commercial success that's come from films based on attractions and lands, and I think making these characters fit into that universe was an excellent choice. To me, this wasn't so much of a ripoff, excuse me, the Disneyland fireworks going off as we speak, so you're going to be hearing those now. To me, it wasn't so much of a ripoff as it was an extension of the Pirates universe. These movies are set in the Disney attractions universe where curses exist that create undead atrocities being reclaimed by the environments that they are cursed to inhabit. And I think that's beautiful. Honorable mention to the natives. I was so excited to see the attacking natives joke played out successfully on the big screen with the natives, or at least Trader Sam, being portrayed as intelligent people who are in on the joke. The native village and the attacking natives were some of my favorite places to tell jokes before they were removed. So I was happy to see the joke immortalized in what I hope was an inoffensive way. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what I, a former skipper, feel about the new changes to the Jungle Cruise. And I have to say, I have not been on the updated Jungle Cruise, but I am 100% for the changes. When I was at the Jungle Cruise, I told a lot of jokes, approved jokes, that looking back now were extremely not okay. 
I'm not ashamed of myself because honestly, I didn't realize how bad they were. And I had the most family friendly company in the world telling me it was all a-okay. But we've learned and changed and grown and it's time to put those outdated stereotypes to bed and move forward. For all of you out there saying, this is bad and wrong and people are just snowflakes and Walt Disney would never let this happen. I just want to know like, do you know what Disney is? Have you been to a Disney park or seen a Disney movie? Sure, the company has made questionable choices, like every company that's been around as long as it has, but Disney has always been about family fun that's appropriate for everyone. It's not some hardcore anti-PC provocateur. It's Disney for Christ's sakes. And besides, Walt Disney himself said the park would never be complete and would keep changing with the time, so... Stop it. Get some help. I've said a lot about the movie, mostly positive things, and that's honestly how I feel about the movie, mostly positive. There's not much wrong with the movie, but there's just so much more they could have gotten right, you know? I liked the movie, but I didn't love the movie, and if it weren't for this video, I probably wouldn't have watched it for a second time. When I see the movie, I have a hard time seeing it for what it is over the ghost of what it could have been. Because although it was the Jungle Cruise movie and had a decent number of Easter eggs and in-jokes, it wasn't really about the Jungle Cruise. Sure, in the beginning, Frank has his own little animatronic setup, and that's cute, but that's not what I was looking for. Where were the jungle boats? Sure, Frank has one, but it's nothing like the one you would ride in the park. The engine looks kind of the same, but that's just about it. And I get that without the downstairs and everything, it would have been hard to sell it as a vessel worthy of this particular voyage, but that just comes with the territory. That's what a jungle cruise boat looks like. That's how the seats are arranged. When you get on a jungle boat, it looks like a thing. And Frank's boat is not that thing. Nilo's boats are, you know, the ones you see for a grand total of maybe three minutes, but not the one we actually take into the adventure. Also, Nilo was terrible. I just want to throw that out there. No, I will not elaborate. As I said before, the movie takes place about 20 years before the Jungle Cruise ride, and I did find that confusing and annoying, but there was one thing that really stood out to me. One way this movie let me down. There were no skippers. Okay, there was one. But honestly, that's not enough. The thing that makes the Jungle Cruise the Jungle Cruise are the skippers, plural. Maybe this is just me because I worked there for so long and made so many great friends, but the Jungle Cruise with only one skipper just feels lonely and sad. And I understand that this is how Frank is supposed to feel, but I just don't think focusing on that for the entire movie did the ride justice. Skippers are pack animals. We talk, we joke, we learn from each other. If you have a good time working on the Jungle Cruise, it's because of the people there. And if you don't like working there, it's probably also because of the people there. A skipper can't even load a boat on their own. And personally, I wouldn't want to. Working at the Jungle Cruise, you're surrounded by some of the funniest, smartest, and most creative people you can find anywhere. A lot of my closest friends in the jungle had whole characters fleshed out for themselves, myself included. And I honestly do not understand why Disney didn't take this direction when casting the Jungle Cruise movie. What's better than two big stars for your summer blockbuster? An entire cast of big stars. A cast of comedy heavy hitters. They could have even cast a lot of people who worked at the parks at some time or another. There are a lot to choose from. Or how about this for a start? Choose comedians to be in the movie at all. What a novel concept. And yes, The Rock is mainly known for his comedic roles, but does he have a tight five? Is it any good? I'm not holding out hope. He could hardly make the jungle spiel funny, and he was being paid $22 million to do it. I can do a boat better than The Rock, and I only made $10 an hour before taxes. Also, the backside of water was a disgrace. There, I said it. Anyway, that's about it for my thoughts on the Jungle Cruise movie. Of all the Disney movies I've seen, it was definitely the most recent. I do think they could do right by the ride in the future movies. But to be perfectly honest, I doubt we're going to see it. Coming up, I am looking forward to seeing the Haunted Mansion movie. It's been announced that it's being directed by the incredible Justin Simeon, and I do hope that they continue this Disney theme park movie death curse thing, because I think it's a really cool way to link the movies together. Since I think I'm going to have a little bit of extra time on this video of uh, footage of me doing this manicure, I thought I might go into a little bit of what's going on here, and what I'm doing, and why I did this manicure this way. So of course, 
course, if you've seen the movie, you know that maps are a big part of the Jungle Cruise movie, and they are also a big part of Jungle Cruise culture on the whole. It used to be, at least, like I said, I haven't been to Disneyland post-pandemic, but before the pandemic, if you got off the ride, you could go to the exit and you could get a Jungle Cruise map from the Jungle Skips in the shipping office, and you would have it for your very own, and it was very fun for children and adults alike to play with their jungle maps. Um, and it was also a really fun thing for skippers because generally, if you had been a skipper for long enough and you were finishing your time at the Jungle Cruise, moving on to bigger and better things, the people who worked with you on your last day would have everybody sign a map for you, and you would get to go home with that map. I do still have that map that I was given the first time I left the Jungle Cruise. I did leave the Jungle Cruise and then come back a little bit later. So I have the map from the first time I left the Jungle Cruise and I cherish it. I also have so much Jungle Cruise map stuff because I worked at the Jungle Cruise for so long and it was such a big part of my identity that like I would get so many Jungle Cruise related gifts, including this map that my mom made for me that was she printed out a giant Jungle Cruise map and she colored it in with glitter gel pens. And when she first made it for me, I was kind of like, what the fuck is this? But over time, it's really grown on me and I'm gonna be making myself a new office space soon. I will be bringing that map into my office. So in future videos, I may show it off or not, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, jungle maps are really important. And I had a really good idea for making this manicure. I knew that the jungle maps were pretty loosey-goosey. So I knew that I could get away with doing a lot of freehand and as you can see I am doing a lot of freehand um, I also am doing a lot of stamping I'm just stamping the letters on the maps and luckily I had some really great stamping plates that I knew would work for this one of them is actually a Ouija board plate that I love and have used for Ouija board purposes but the font looked kind of like the Jungle Cruise font and then I have this other plate called the Scrabble plate that you can get on Amazon and that one had a similar font but in lowercase whereas the Ouija board one is in all caps. I don't really know why the Scrabble plate doesn't have the same font in caps and lowercase, but it didn't. So I kind of just had to make it work. Also watching this video has really inspired me to use Simply Nail Logical's technique of dotting nail polish onto yogurt lids because I have been watching myself for the past 20 minutes, like just nearly avoid drops of polish with my hands while doing this manicure. And it is driving me absolutely fucking nuts. Yeah, I did love how this manicure turned out. I wish that I filmed it a little bit better. Um, if you're wondering what the green stuff is around my nails, I wish I had pulled it off sooner. That is liquid latex. I uh, use bulk liquid latex, which is why it's that color. And I honestly should have just taken it off once I did the thing with the saran wrap, which by the way, if you don't know what the thing with the saran wrap was, basically I put down a base color that was beige and then I used both a darker beige or brown and also the light one again with saran wrap to kind of make a weathered matte feel. On this manicure, I'm going to be using first a glossy top coat to protect it and then a matte top coat over that so that it really has the look of paper. I'm using OPI's matte top coat and it's the only matte top coat I've used. I was about to say it's one of my favorites. Um, I think it would be one of my favorites even if it wasn't the only one I'd ever used. I don't love matte manicures, but the way that the OPI matte top coat dries, it really looks like paper. So when I initially did this and was just showing pictures to my friends, they actually thought I had taken pieces of a printed Jungle Cruise map and had like decaled them onto my nails. So that was like pretty cool that people thought that, but that's not what I did. I just used Orly matte top coat and it worked really, really well. Uh, there are some things that didn't work out quite as well as I wanted them to in this manicure. I wanted to draw an elephant. I did not draw the elephant great, but to be fair, the elephant on the original map wasn't that great, so uh, whatever. I did put a peel off base coat under this manicure so I could peel it off, but it actually didn't come off very well, so I'm not even going to show that footage because it's very, very sad. So sorry for you nail people who were looking forward to peel porn at the end of this. Apologies. Anyway, so yeah, just a lot of hand painting and some stamping and that's what I did. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little chat about the movie. Please watch your step and watch your head on the way out of the YouTube video. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more nail art or media rants. I hope y'all had half as much fun watching this video as I had recording it, because that means I had twice as much fun as you. Thank you and see you next time.